The Wind in the Willows Chapter 5 Home Sweet Home Please like, share, and subscribe. Mole and Rat were on their way home late one December afternoon after a long day of exploring with Otter. It was a chilly gray day, and they were looking forward to being home. Rat was walking a little ahead as Mole trotted along behind him, thinking about supper. It was dark by then, and he was very hungry. Suddenly, Mole felt a certain tingle and smelled a familiar smell. He stopped dead in his tracks, trying to figure out what it was. Then it came to him. Home! His very own home, the one he'd left on the spring cleaning day so many months ago. They must be passing near it. Oh, his happy home! He knew it wasn't anything fancy, but suddenly he wanted to see it. Ratty, he called, full of excitement. Come back. Oh, come on, Mole, replied Rat, still plodding along. Please, Ratty, begged poor Mole. You don't understand. It's my home, my old home. I just smelled it, and it's close by here, really close, and I have to go to it. I have to. Oh, Ratty, please, please come back. But Rat was very far ahead by then, too far to hear what Mole was saying. He smelled snow in the air, and he wanted to hurry home. Mole, we can't stop now, he called back. We'll come for it tomorrow, whatever it is. He kept going, without waiting for an answer. Poor Mole stood alone in the road, feeling torn in two directions. He was a loyal friend and did not want Rat to go on alone, but oh, how his home was calling to him. Finally, he pushed himself forward, following Rat. It nearly broke his heart, but he did it. He caught up to Rat, who began chatting cheerfully about how they'd build a fire and have a lovely supper when they got home. Finally, he noticed how upset Mole was. Mole, he said, you seem tired. Let's sit down here on these tree stumps for a minute and rest. We're almost home. Mole sank down onto a tree stump and tried to keep from crying but it was no use. He gave up. He cried and cried, sobbing his heart out. Rat felt terrible. He let Mole cry for a while, and then he said gently, What is it, old fellow? What's the matter? Poor Mole could hardly talk. He was crying so hard. I know it's a sh shabby, dingy little place, he sobbed. Not l like our cozy rooms, or, or, or Toad's beautiful house, or Badger's great ho house, but it, it was my own little home, and I loved it. And I went away, and I forgot all about it. And then I smelled it, and, and I called you, and you wouldn't listen, Rat. You wouldn't turn back, and I had to leave it. And I thought my heart would break. We could have just gone and had one look at it, Ratty, but... Just one look, but you wouldn't turn back, Ratty. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Thinking about it made him start sobbing all over again, and he began to cry even harder. Rat patted Mole gently on the shoulder. He waited until Mole's crying calmed down, and he was just sniffling. Then he got up and said, Well, now we really should be going, old chap. He set off going back the way he'd come. Where are you g going, Ratty? cried Mole. We're going to find that home of yours, old fellow, replied Rat. So come along. We'll need your nose to find it. Now Mole felt bad, and he tried to protest, but Rat wouldn't listen. Cheerfully, he led Mole along, back to the spot where Mole had first stopped. Now, he said, use your nose. He stepped back and watched until suddenly Mole stood very still for a moment, then stopped duck his twitching nose into the air. He ran forward a few steps, and then back, then forward again. Rat followed closely as Mole, looking like a sleepwalker, crossed a ditch, scrambled through a hedge, and nosed his way across an open field. Suddenly, without any warning, he dived. But Rat was watching, and he followed him right down the tunnel. Soon, they were standing at Mole's little front door, and a sign that said, Mole End, over the doorbell. Mole took a lantern from a nail on the wall and lit it. Then Rat could see a neat little garden 
with benches and tables and statues and even a little fish pond. Mole looked happily at all his things. Then he led Rat inside and lit a lamp. When he saw how dusty and shabby everything looked, he threw himself into a chair, upset again. Oh, Ratty, he cried. Why did I bring you to this cold little place in the night like this when you could have been home by now? Rat ignored him. He ran here and there, opening doors, inspecting rooms and closets, and lighting lamps and candles. What a perfect little house this is, he called out cheerily. Everything here and everything in its place. We need a good fire. I'll take care of that. You try to clean things up a bit. Let's go, old chap. Mole jumped up and dusted and polished, and Rat soon had a cheerful blaze roaring in the fireplace. He called to Mole to come and warm himself, but Mole had another fit of the blues. He plopped down on a couch. Rat, he moaned, what about supper, you poor, cold, hungry, tired animal? I have nothing to give you, not a crumb. Oh, come now, Rat said. Don't give up so easily. Let's go see what we can find. I'm sure there's something here. They hunted through all the cupboards and drawers and found a can of sardines, some crackers, and a sausage. There we are, said Rat. No bread, groaned Mole. No butter. No no steak, no ice cream, continued Rat, grinning. Let's be happy for what we do have. Plenty to eat and such a nice little house to eat it in. Why don't you tell me about it while we set the table? Where did you get this nice old painting, for example? Once Mole began to talk about his house, he couldn't stop. While Rat set the table, Mole told him all about how he'd built the house and went on with the story of how he'd gotten every piece of furniture and every lamp. Rat nodded and smiled, getting hungrier and hungrier. Finally, they were ready to sit down to eat, but just then, there was a scuffling noise from outside. Next, Mole and Rat heard voices. Now, all in a line, hold the lantern up a bit, Tommy. Where's young Bill? We're all waiting. What's up, asked Rat. I think it must be the field mice, said Mole. They go around singing carols at this time of year. They always come to Mole End last. I used to give them hot drinks and even supper sometimes. It will be like old times to hear them again. Let's see them, cried Rat. He ran to open the door. There, in the entryway, were eight or ten little field mice standing in a group, red scarves around their necks. As the door opened, one of the older ones said, Now then, one, two, three, and their shrill little voices rose on the air, singing an old Christmas carol. Well sung, boys, cried Rat when they were done. And now come in and warm yourselves by the fire and have something hot. Yes, come in, field mice, cried Mole. This is like old times. Shut the door now, you. Pull up the bench to the fire. Now, you just wait a minute while we... Oh, Ratty, he cried. What are we doing? We don't have a thing to give them. You leave that to me, said Rat. He turned to the field mice and called out, You with the lantern. I want to talk to you. Tell me, are there any shops open this late? Why, certainly, sir, replied the field mouse. Then listen, said Rat. I want you to go right out and get... His voice dropped, and Mole couldn't hear much after that. Rat gave the mouse some money and a big basket and sent him on his way. The rest of the field mice sat in a row by the fire, too shy to talk much until Mole asked about their younger brothers and sisters. That got them going. Meanwhile, Rat made some hot chocolate and passed it around. Before long, the first mouse came back with a very full basket of food. In a few minutes, supper was ready and they sat down with Mole at the head of the table. Everyone talked and laughed and ate until they were full. After dinner, the mice headed home carrying leftovers for their younger brothers and sisters. Mole and Rat sat by the fire and talked about their day until Rat, with a tremendous yawn, <sighs> said, Mole, old chap, I'm ready for bed. He climbed into his bunk, tucked himself in, and fell asleep right away. Mole got into bed too, but before he closed his eyes, he looked around at the room and all his familiar things. He knew now that as much as he loved his adventurous new life, he still loved home too. It was good to think that he always had this place to come back to.
We'll read chapter six next time. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. I love you guys. Bye-bye.